Players define the decades. Bonds, Pujols, and A-Rod define the 2000s, while Trout, Betts, and Kershaw define the 2010s. We are already predicting who will define the 2020s, but it's inevitable that someone's career will be derailed due to injuries. Examples include David Wright and Troy Tulowitzki. It's not like they didn't accomplish anything of note in their careers, but in the end, we ask what if they stayed healthy? Well, in the 1980s, that player was Eric Davis. Let's see just how great he was. Prior to his big league journey, Davis grew up in LA. Through his time in high school, he was a great baseball and basketball player, often playing against his childhood friend, Daryl Strawberry, as they attended opposing high schools. While Strawberry was the first overall pick in the 1980 draft, Davis was an eighth round pick by the Reds. During his time in the minor leagues, Davis was considered a five-tool player. Between 1981 and 1983, Davis hit 48 home runs and had 141 stolen bases. This production forced the Reds to call up Davis in May 1984. He wasn't able to play the whole season, but the potential was clearly there, especially when he hit five home runs within a four-game span right after returning from a knee injury. Though in 1985, he spent most of the season in AAA as he was playing poorly with the big league squad, sitting with an OPS of 637 in early June. But in 1986, the tools all came together. At the end of May, his OPS was 665. By the All-Star break, his OPS was 914. Also, by the end of August, Davis had joined the 2060 club, becoming the third player along with Joe Morgan and Ricky Henderson to hit 20 home runs and steal 60 bases in a season. The most stolen bases Davis had in a season was 80, which was in 1986. In 132 games, he hit 27 home runs and stole 80 bases. Only two players have hit 20 home runs and accumulated 80 stolen bases in a season. Eric Davis and Ricky Henderson, twice. In 1987, Davis ramped up his production even more. At age 25, he entered his first All-Star game. By the All-Star break, Davis's stat line looked like this. 1,100 OPS, 27 home runs, and 33 stolen bases. Davis was looking to become the first player to produce a 40-40 season. Unfortunately, an injured rib in September, along with a late season slump, ended that possibility. Though, he still won a gold glove and silver slugger. But the most impressive thing he did in 1987 actually started back in 1986. During a 162 game period between June 11th, 1986 and July 4th, 1987, Davis had a stat line that looked like this. 47 home runs, 98 stolen bases. You know how many players in MLB history have done this in a 162 game span? One, Eric Davis. All right, let's lower the requirements to 40 home runs and 90 stolen bases. Nope, just Davis. Okay, 30 home runs and 80 stolen bases. Davis and Henderson. Okay, 30 home runs and 60 stolen bases. Davis, Henderson, Joe Morgan, and Cesar Cedeno. Davis was truly one of a kind, but it wasn't just his hitting ability. He was a fantastic center fielder. He won three gold gloves for a reason. In fact, here's Davis himself talking about his defense. A lot of people talk about my home runs, but I don't, I don't get a lot of credit for, for the way I play defense, and that's what I strive on uh, more than anybody anticipates, and I like to play defense, and I think uh, me going over the wall making, making the catches has been more of an inspiration to me than anything. In 1987, Davis robbed a home run from Jack Clark in back-to-back -back games. He even took a home run away from his childhood friend, Daryl Strawberry. The guy could do anything. He was that good. 
During an ESPN feature on Davis in 1987, manager Pete Rose said Davis had the best instincts of any player he had ever seen. And while he couldn't compare Davis to Mays or Clemente as Davis was so early into his career, he believed Davis possessed more talent. For the next few seasons, Davis continued to showcase his elite talent. Between 1986 and 1990, Davis played 654 games. He hit 148 home runs and stole 207 bases. And you guessed it, no one else in MLB history has ever done that in that amount of games. Between these seasons, Davis had the fifth highest OPS among all players. These performances earned Davis a contract after the 1989 season a three-year contract worth $9.3 million. Although there was one problem, he never played close to a full season. Between 1986 and 1990, the most games he played was 135 in 1988. And well, this would be the most games Davis would play in a single season for his entire career. He suffered multiple random injuries throughout his career, such as a swollen elbow after being hit by a pitch, bruising his knee after colliding with teammates chasing a fly ball, and a torn hamstring, among others. And well, the 1990 World Series would mark the beginning of the end. In 1990, the Reds were in the World Series against the Oakland A's. Davis began the series by hitting a two-run home run in the first inning of Game 1. By Game 4, the Reds were going for the sweep. However, in the first inning, Davis dived at a ball hit by Willie McGee and was noticeably hurt by the dive. While Davis finished the inning, he collapsed on his way to the dugout. He had lacerated a kidney and would spend 40 days in the hospital. Instead of celebrating with his teammates after the game, Davis was in the operating room. After this injury, Davis's career would never be the same. While Davis's doctor advised him to sit out the 1991 season, he was there on opening day. Unfortunately, he only played 89 games, leading to the Reds trading him to the Dodgers, but his struggles continued in LA. Then, in mid-1993, he was traded to the Tigers, and while he was an average player overall, it was sad to see the decline. More injuries and the strike of 1994 limited Davis's time in Detroit, and as a result of surgery for a herniated disc, Davis retired prior to the 1995 season. Although in 1996, Davis returned to Cincinnati and played his best season in years, despite being 34 years old. Davis signed with the Orioles for the 1997 season, but one month into the season, Davis's life changed forever. After a collision at home plate, Davis said he couldn't get up because of the pain. He spent over a week in the hospital until the doctors could figure out what was wrong. Well, doctors would find a tumor in his colon, meaning he had cancer. But Davis felt more relief than panic, as he could finally work on getting better and ultimately returning to the field. And despite ongoing chemotherapy treatment, he returned to the Orioles in September, ready to contribute to the playoff push, with his most notable contribution being a pinch hit home run in the ninth inning of Game 5 in the ALCS. While the Orioles didn't make the World Series, Davis showed at the age of 36 and in the midst of cancer treatment that he still possessed the talent and the heart. He would spend his last few seasons with the Cardinals and Giants, ending his 17-year career in 2001. Here are Davis's career stats. It's quite impressive to see how much he accomplished given how often he couldn't play. 
Do you want to know how many players have reached 282 home runs and 349 stolen bases in a career? Six players. Barry Bonds, Bobby Bonds, Ricky Henderson, Craig Biggio, Bobby Abreu, and Eric Davis. And Davis played so much less than the others. I do have to say, one of the most surprising players on this list is Bobby Abreu. I mean, he got less than 9% of the vote on this year's Hall of Fame ballot. But he has the foolish baseball endorsement. Maybe there's a case to uncover. But then again, I still have to talk about Jimmy Rollins. Anyway, Davis may not have fully realized his Hall of Fame potential, or at the very least couldn't stay on the field long enough to accumulate the stats, but his style of play and attitude garnered fans from around the country. His all-in style of fielding created lots of highlight plays, despite the resulting injuries. He possessed great power and was feared on the base paths, but off the field he displayed resilience during his cancer treatments, even returning and positively contributing to a playoff run. It's impossible to say where his career would have ended up if he had stayed healthy, but at the very least, he proved how talented he was as one of the greatest power-speed combo players of all time. I just wish he could have played a full season. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like if you did, and subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks for watching.